Is intelligent life out there in the universe? Well, with scientists discovering new exoplanets every year, yeah, the possibility only grows stronger. Will we discover alien life in the future? Or will they discover us? In this episode, we take a look at the multiple possibilities that could happen if aliens are out there, from what they might look like to the incredible technology they might control. Let's start with a scenario where aliens come to invade our home. Day one. The aliens have officially invaded Earth, and they're not here to make friends. Many scientists theorize that if alien life showed up on Earth, it'd be because they want something from us. Space travel, as we know it, is incredibly expensive and time-consuming, so if an alien race traveled to planet Earth, they wouldn't be doing it to shake hands and have a chat over coffee. They'd probably be here to mine precious resources that they don't have in their galaxy. Or they might be coming to perform experiments on us and learn more about the human race. On a cultural level, the discovery of alien life could change everything. Humans would question what they know about religion, culture, and philosophy. The good news is that one of humanity's biggest questions would finally be answered. Yes, aliens are real. But what happens when they invade us? Well, we're not sure totally what their intentions are just yet. This is only day one. Over the course of this video, we'll keep checking in and seeing where this alien invasion could go. But before we get to our full-on alien invasion, what would these extraterrestrials look like? Well, there are a ton of different theories, from simple microorganisms to intelligent life that could take over entire galaxies. In this scenario, we have a couple of options scientists have theorized we might possibly discover one day. Let's explore, starting with the simple and getting increasingly weird. This is Subject 004, and it looks oddly familiar. This is bacteria found on Earth. Wait, what? I thought we were talking about aliens. Well, some scientists theorize that life found on Earth might be extraterrestrial. Earth was hit with thousands of meteors four billion years ago, and attached to these meteors may have been tiny bits of bacteria that were the building blocks for the life we have on Earth. Next is Subject 021. This alien looks a lot like us for some reason. Boring, yeah, I know, but some scientists think it could exist. We're discovering more and more exoplanets similar to Earth every year, and the only intelligent life that we're confident that exists in the universe is us. So if you have a planet that's similar to Earth with similar conditions, well, it makes sense that life on that exoplanet could have evolved similar to humans. But aliens might not be organic at all. What if aliens are artificial intelligence? Introducing Subject 042. This is an extraterrestrial being that happens to be a highly intelligent robot. Hey, what do advanced societies, space colonies, and interstellar travel all have in common, other than them all being featured in sci-fi movies? Well, they all take highly intelligent minds and a ton of hard work to pull off. And what better way to accomplish this than to put a bunch of hardworking, highly intelligent robots on it? Ones that never get tired and keep learning at an advanced rate. Artificially intelligent aliens are a possibility for a few reasons. First, they wouldn't be limited to the pesky limitations that we organic life forms might have. AI wouldn't have to worry about oxygen, food, sleeping, or anything else that might get in the way of building a galactic empire. They also wouldn't need to worry about building on a planet with an atmosphere. They could bypass the need to breathe, as well as any safety concerns. They could expand to planets that we weakling humans might not even dream suitable for life. If the AI doesn't need to worry about things like their planet being in the Goldilocks zone, well, theoretically, they could populate any celestial body they want. But this also assumes that the AI would have the same epic desires as humans. Who knows how they would want to spend their time? They may hibernate for billions of years and wait for certain stars to explode. They might just want to keep to themselves and not make a massive impact on the galaxy or interact with other species. Okay, the final alien we're theorizing about is Subject 339. This one looks a little bit more unusual than what we're used to because it's composed of silicone instead of carbon. 
The checkboxes for life that silicone needs completely differs from what we're used to. On a molecular level, this type of life is much more unstable than carbon, but it can also live at extremely low temperatures and high atmospheric pressures. It could also look quite different from other life forms. These aliens might appear to be rock-like or be crystallized in some form. But regardless of what they look like, they'd be bizarre. Okay, now let's go back to Earth and check in on our alien invasion. Day 30. The aliens have come equipped with several advanced pieces of tech. Using wormhole technology, they've been able to move across the universe in seconds. Earth is now full of floating megastructures, far beyond our current technological capabilities. Over the last 30 days, the aliens have been slowly and methodically taking over parts of the world, attacking our infrastructure, governments, and cities, all in hopes of taking over our planet and mining our resources. Our most powerful militaries have been working together to counterattack the invading aliens, using our most advanced technologies in hopes of fighting them off. Up in the sky, more alien megastructures appear. Massive structures are being assembled that can mine and terraform our planet with ease. Now, before all this happened, scientists had been working for decades in hopes of finding alien life. Let's take a look back to figure out how we got here. There have been hundreds, if not thousands, of fake alien reports and sightings, from people saying UFOs are in their backyard to fake alien corpses being presented as real. One of the most notable events happened in late 2023. Self-described UFO expert Jaime Mawson showed what looked to be two alien specimens to the Mexican Congress. The corpses were shriveled up gray bodies with three fingers. Mawson claimed they were non-human, but Experts quickly debunked these claims. Mawson showed up with spotty evidence and it was revealed that the specimens were human but may have been manipulated to look extraterrestrial. Ugh. Another claim of alien life in 2023 was made by a former United States military intelligence officer. He said that the US government was in possession of some sort of UFO and a non-human pilot. However, NASA and government officials have since refuted the claims and said there was no evidence to back it up. Now, we can go back and forth on what's real and what's fake in these claims, but it's safe to say that there's no real and significant evidence that intelligent life is out there. At least not yet. But scientists are working hard to find some. One of the most likely methods of finding alien life is through the James Webb Telescope. Since 2021, this super telescope has been trying to find exoplanets across our galaxy. It has the ability to analyze the composition of the atmospheres on the exoplanets. It looks for things like oxygen, carbon dioxide, and methane, and if it happens to find these, that could be a good sign for potential alien life. Another option is a bit closer to home, in our own solar system. Scientists have been looking at Mars, as well as one of the moons of Jupiter, Europa, in hopes of finding life. This life would most likely appear in microbacterial form. Now, if we want to find more intelligent alien life, we could go the SETI route. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence is a group of over 100 scientists who have been searching the universe for decades. They're using AI to scan the cosmos in hopes of finding out what's out there. Since 1960, SETI has been scanning the skies for radio signals that are different from the cosmic background noise. If they find something that isn't naturally occurring, well, it could indicate that it might be from an advanced civilization. But in our invasion scenario, we weren't the ones discovering the aliens. Ah, these aliens discovered us. Day 100. In the past 100 days, a full-on alien war has broken out. Militaries and even civilian fighters are battling this alien species, but no matter what we do, it's nearly impossible to stop them. Remember, these extraterrestrials were able to travel from a different galaxy to reach Earth, meaning they're highly intelligent and have some seriously advanced tech. They can terraform or wipe out entire cities with the push of a button. The one advantage humans might have in this case is our sheer number of troops that we can assemble. Since we're on our home turf, we'd have all 8 billion people to help fight back. 
We'd assume that this alien species likely traveled incredibly far and with less than 8 billion people, so we could beat them when it came to a sheer numbers game. But again, they have technology so advanced that we might not be capable of fighting back at all. Our best bet might be to retreat, go into hiding, and avoid the aliens as much as we can. Okay, we'll check back in on the alien invasion in a minute, but as we've been going through this scenario, I've been wondering, why haven't we found any aliens yet? With billions of stars and habitable planets, it seems that the probability of us finding intelligent life out there should be pretty high. Well, this is where the Fermi paradox comes in. Developed by physicist Enrico Fermi, this paradox is about the idea that there's a high probability of extraterrestrial life out there. Well, then why haven't we found any? The Milky Way alone has billions of stars similar to our sun, each of which could have many habitable planets. There's also billions of galaxies out there that are much older than ours, so if intelligent life, or any life at all, is common in outer space, well, there should be some that are more advanced than ours. In theory, they'd be able to travel across the universe and visit us on Earth. But we've yet to find any concrete proof of alien life existing. So why? Well, one of the leading explanations is called the Great Filter Theory. This idea proposes a stage in civilization's development that's incredibly difficult for life to overcome. This stage could be several things, from civilizations needing to overcome all-out wars, to being able to reach great technological heights. Now, if the civilization does pass this filter, then it could be an interstellar civilization. But the problem is, we haven't seen or don't know of any civilization that's managed to pass it yet, leading us to think that there's something in the development of civilizations that prevents them from becoming an interstellar species. This could be war or famine or some sort of catastrophic destruction. Regardless of what it exactly is, it seems civilizations may be unable to cross this threshold. And now that brings us back to our alien invasion scenario. Day 300. What makes this alien species so terrifying is the fact that they've been able to cross the Great Filter. It's possible these aliens would have come from a highly advanced civilization, much older and much more experienced than ours. They've been through all sorts of potential extinction events, but have somehow managed to survive and become more advanced. And now they've been attacking and conquering Earth for nearly a year. Humans have done all they could, but with a society this advanced, it would be nearly impossible to win this fight. The aliens have been building more megastructures and mining more of our resources. Eventually, they'd take all they need from our planet and move on, potentially leaving humanity to live in a barren wasteland. But an alien encounter doesn't always need to end with a full-on invasion. The aliens could potentially be similar to humans. Maybe they're simply looking to explore and find new life forms. Maybe we could be a society that they simply want to observe and watch. And this is where the galactic zoo theory comes in. This theory proposes that extraterrestrials are so advanced that they want nothing to do with us, at least directly. They may see Earth and our solar system as a giant enclosed zoo, one that's full of different species for them to watch and observe. Think of the way we humans might think about ants. They're fun to watch and study in the colonies for short periods of time, but we'd never want to directly interact with them. We look at them as beneath us in terms of intelligence and what they have to offer. So that's how aliens might look at humanity. And knowing what an alien invasion could look like, well, I think I'd prefer it if the aliens sat and watched, as long as they remembered to like and subscribe. Now, this is what would happen if the aliens decided to find us, but what if we went out to find the aliens on Jupiter's moon? Well, that sounds like a story for another What If.